going on, people? I'm Trayvon Miles. And I'm Jeff Harris. And this, of course, is the, the Dell Marvel Sports, Sports Insider. Insider. Coming up in just a bit on tonight's episode, Bennett Baseball taking on Steve Decatur. Nothing but college athletes on the field, and we've got the highlights. Also, the Y High boys lacrosse team played through some pretty unpleasant weather earlier this week. We have some full highlights from their rainy matchup coming up. That's right, and Cape girls lacrosse going for their gazillionth win in a row, I'd say, <laughs> as they took on Indian River. And I'll give you a little spoiler alert, this score got ugly, folks. Happy April Fools, people. Welcome to the show you know and love, Delmarva Sports Insider. Of course, uh, we've got a packed show for you tonight. We begin right here in Salisbury, less than 10 minutes from our studio over at the Parkside. Brian Holloman's squad is off to quite a start. The Rams boasted a 3-0 record as they brace to host Y High on Tuesday into the second inning. Tied at two, Brant Smith going to hit one in the center field. RBI single gives Parkside the lead. Later on in the inning, check out Tolan Harrison. He's going to sky one to shallow center here. Uh, but surprisingly, Y High just can't get under the ball. I guess it was a sunny day out there <laughs> a little bit. Sean Fisher going to tag up and then come on home and then check it out with a 3-2 count. Andrew Smith with a man on third. Pitcher deals ball four, and it is a pass ball. The park side run comes in. Smith ends up all the way on second. Uh, the Rams would close things out. Jake Whittington going to line one right back up the middle here on this play. And, of course, he catches it and doubles up the runner there at first to end the game as Parkside holds on to an 11 to 6 win. And I tell you what, Jeff, Parkside has got to be the team to beat right now. We've seen a lot of these teams right now leading the Bayside South as they are right now. And if they can keep their heads on straight, I think that they can storm through the Bayside. It's always hard to go undefeated when you've always got that target on your back consistently. But I think they've got a shot. They've got a great coach and got some great players. Great players. We mentioned them. We have Smith. You also have Sean Fisher, yep. University of Maryland recruit, a few other pitchers, yeah. <laughs> college, collegiate pitchers. They have the talent to yes. make a deep playoff run. I think, you know, a few months down the road, that's what we'll we're going to say. Yeah, I agree. Now to Del Mar, where the Wildcats played host to the Golden Knights of Sussex Central on Tuesday afternoon. This one was a matter of starting pitching. You're going to see strikeout after strikeout. Jake Brewington and Jimmy Adkins put on quite a show. Sussex Central pitcher Jake Brewington starting out, striking out a batter there. Del Mar's Jimmy Adkins, as you see there as well, striking out a few batters. The two pitchers will combine for seven strikeouts through the first three innings. The game would be scoreless through eight innings of play. Adkins with a few strikeouts, Brewington with a few strikeouts. Final, though, in 11 innings, Del Mar 2, Sussex Central 1. Impressive showing from both starting pitchers in yeah. this one, but I've been impressed with Del Mar throughout most of the season. Yeah. We were talking about it a little bit off camera. They start the season right now at 4-0, mm -hmm. and, you know, between some of the matchups that they have a little bit later on in uh, the season, it really seems as though they might be able to make a playoff run. Yeah, I really think it's going to be interesting to see what Del Mar uh, does this season. Uh, Jimmy Atkins, there's one of our star players, always he makes sure he hits me on Twitter and what? tells me that they won that game every time. And uh, so far, they're 4-0. Can't be stopped right now. And a pretty impressive win over Sussex Central, a Division One team right there. All right, well, staying in Delaware now, Indian River taking on Caravel earlier this week. Down a bunch early on. Base knock for the Indians. Jacob Anderson is going to drive a run in, and the Indians are finally, finally on the board. Uh, Jason Killings dealing on the mound, and Alex Baker going to pull the ball to right field. And uh, Jeff, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I think that's yeah, over the wall. That, that is a home gone. run. Good for a solo <laughs> shot for Caravel. Next inning, Indians have a runner on third, and Killings is going to drive one to right field for the sacrifice fly. Killings was making a killing in this game. All right, Robert Argo going to tag up at home and score, and Caravelle would just steal the show. Alex Holliday going to pull the ball to left field. Baker goes on to score again as Caravelle goes on to win it by a count of 14 to 9. That was more like a football score, I'd right. say. Uh, but uh, Indian River, a very interesting team, in my opinion, I'd say. Uh, they started 0-9 a season ago. Uh, at 1-3 and three right now, and I know Coach DJ Long is always pressing for that team to get better. They got Tech. Delmar and Decatur coming up. So uh, the team with two seniors, Indian River, better do some growing up, and they better do it quick before uh, that uh, schedule starts coming around. I couldn't agree more, Trey. But we're going to turn our attention now to one of the best matchups, at least that I saw personally yeah. this past week, as Stephen Decatur visited Bennett on Wednesday. We're going to pick things up in the fourth inning. Clippers leading 3 to nothing. Brett Burquist hits a ground ball to the left side. The throw to first is wow. in the dirt. Run is going to come on in to score. Seahawks get on the board. It's now 3-1. to one. Fifth inning now, Dallas Rapine deals, but the ball gets past the catcher. 
Ryan Duncan comes in to score, uh, making it a one-run ball game. Later in the inning, watch this. Wyatt Church is on third. The ball is going to be hit to the infield. Church breaks for home and slides in oh, head first. Look goodness. at all that dirt. Go get some, kid. I'll see but kind of an anticlimactic finish here at the bottom of the seventh, right at the end of the game. Bases juiced with Cade Hurley up to bat. That's it. He's walked in with the bases loaded. Jake Shockley uh, comes in, to, walked by Jake Shotley. Adam McCauley comes in to score. Bennett goes on to win four to three. Wow. Hands down, <laughs> one of the top matchups that I had the pleasure of going to watch this past week. Strong pitching from both teams and a lot of collegiate talent on both sides. Very interested to see how the Stephen Decatur team responds heading into probably, you know, the meatier part of their schedule. Yeah, and you know what? Bennett and Stephen Decatur have had some classic battles. They're two teams that always seem to have a lot of college talent. Right along with Parkside and what they bring to the table every single year. But I'll tell you what, Bennett and Stephen Decatur in 3A. It's going to be very interesting. Also, Parkside moving to 3A next year, so all the baseball powers will be in one division next, starting next year. Uh, so that will be very interesting to see. Don't know who's going to come out on top of that with those guys beating each other up all year long. All right, taking it now to some action from Monday. Two of the top programs in the Bayside North went to battle. Cambridge took the trip to American Corner to the visit the defending North champion, Colonel Richardson Colonels. And uh, the, refs, uh, the coaches there meeting with the umpires there before first pitch. Cambridge on the board early. Base knock here by Tyler Harding. Also a football name we know. He's going to bring in Evan Fistapal. Cambridge takes a 1-0 lead, but Colonel would respond, tying this game up in the third. Jake Zebron, you'll hear that name a lot. He beats out the throw. He's hustling the first. Uh, Tyler Stanley scores to make it a 1-1 game to the fourth now. Colonel going to break this thing open with an eight-run inning, including this shot to center by Grant LaBelle. Ty Scott. Is going to touch home plate right there. He, along with seven more colonels in that inning. Remy Magnum was on the mound and a strong afternoon from this young man, the coach's son, racking up strikeouts, including this one. Colonel goes on to win this one by a final of nine to nothing. Now to Sussex Tech and Woodbridge. Play, pay close attention to this man, yeah. Sussex Tech's Matt Warrington. Absolutely dealing all afternoon. Warrington get a little help, though, as we're about to see. Look at this catch Jeez. by Gabe Westcott. Uh, Rockets won the left. Jason Genshaw comes up with a diving catch. And uh, to close the third inning, uh, Warrington with another strikeout. Sussex Tech would lead 5 to nothing heading into the fifth. Warrington now up to bat, really actually able to produce here on offense. Too. Knock a single through the right side as two runs come in to score. And kind of putting the cherry on the top of this one, Warrington with think? another strikeout, bottom oh of the fourth. Sussex Tech would go on to win 12 to nothing in five innings. All right, and Pocomoke back to the Bayside South. The Warriors baseball team taking on Chris Field. Apparently, baseball a pretty good game to look at. Chris Sanders gets the strike out there for the Warriors. Crabbers eventually going to get to him. John Morgan looked like he got a little jammed up there, uh, but he still got that ball inside the line. Jordan Merritt coming around to score as they take the lead. Par Pocomoke, excuse me, going to get one back in the bottom of the frame. Noah Brittingham sending one deep into center field. Jarrett Hancock going to beat the throw home. Big play here. Check it out. The Warriors trying to get a man into scoring position. Chris Field catcher Ryan Evans going to come up, flaming one. And uh, did not look like the shortstop got that tag, uh, but apparently the umpire said he did. Chris Field ends the run right there, and they go on to get a road win by a final of 6-4. to four. Same teams going at it on the softball diamond as well this week. Watch as Chloe Riordan. She's going to hit a dribbler down to the third baseline, but an error allows Samantha Dingus and Natalie Chris Afully to come around for Pocomoke and score. They take a big lead in this one. A little bit later on, we're going to flip uh, the switch to, you know, a few of the future innings. Laney Pruitt up for Chris Field. She hits one to third, but the throw is airmailed past first. Wow. Whoa. As both Cave Stevens and Shelby Kunarski come around to score. Lady Warriors would settle down, though, after that one. They wouldn't give up another run, mostly to the credit of Kristen Quillen. She gets the strikeout here to end the six as Pokemoth gets win number two of the season with an 11-2 victory. You know, Pokemoke only had one win all of last year. That's what everybody kept have, telling me, already yeah. Already have two wins. So pretty impressive. Shout out to those ladies. Uh, we're watching you here at DSI. All right, first block done. When we come back, Indian River boys lacrosse looking to remain undefeated. How about it on the year? Hosting Milford. Stay with us. You're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. My name is Matthew Warrington. I pitch for the Sussex Tech Ravens, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. 